What was it you said? Six one to Argentina. I, I think it was five. What came, Murray? All right. So let, let's not let's not let's not create lies now on live. Okay. Okay. I said five. All right. But I have Argentina winning. I would say, well, taking in mind, if they saw what the England did to Iran, I, I feel like Argentina might want to prove a point here. Maybe like five one. I say. Okay, I put my hand up, K. Murray. I was wrong, K. Murray. I'm sorry, everybody. It happens, okay? But listen, if you predicted Saudi Arabia to beat Argentina, then you're not watching the game. Because no. all the stats that you just said, right, they've been undefeated in 36 matches. I watched every single game in World Cup qualifiers for South America. And Argentina, they're not new to the high press, and we'll talk about it strategically right now. This is a shock statement. Full, full credit to Saudi Arabia because they basically argentina Argentina, K. Murray. That's exactly what they did. They bullied them. They didn't allow them to do anything in the midfield. Every time the balls were trying to go to Angel Di Maria, Lautaro Martinez, or Messi, it just wasn't happening. A tremendous goal to claim the winner. I mean, I, I'm in shock. I was wrong, K. Murray, okay? But I'm, I'm kind of happy I was wrong because it's, it's good to see shock results like this at the World Cup, right? It, it, no, it really is, but I'm interested because I know you've been keeping a close eye on those qualifiers, but at half time, Luis, you had a feeling, as you've just said, I've seen them have to play against the high line before, but in the second half, I feel as though you thought it was going to be okay and they'd be able to come back against this. So what gave you that feeling and why didn't it happen? Just uh, one thing, let's focus on the main star here, Lionel Messi. I thought that, especially from what we've seen with his club, PSG, I thought that in the second half, Lionel Scaloni was going to say, all right, listen, here's what Saudi Arabia is doing. Super high line, they're pressing, they're not allowing you to do much in the midfield. Side point, this is why I think uh, Giovanni Lo Celso is a huge absence for Argentina, because he's usually the man that can figure that out and break the lines. And I thought Messi, K okay, in the second half, was going to drop way deeper. And maybe Julian Alvarez would come in right from the get go. PSG Messi. Yeah, and 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 it just didn't happen. And again, full credit to Saudi Arabia. I don't want to take anything away from them. I mean, this is a historic, historic result, and they did such a good job, Kay. At you know, the high line is one thing, but they just press. They're two strikers. They're line. They're back. Their their midfield line of four behind them pressing so high. Yes, this is me saying I'm sorry. I want to make it official, okay? I'm saying I'm making it an official statement from the Eche Garay account. I was wrong. You know how many people, especially Can I, can men, I read this out just for the benefit of anybody who will be listening on the podcast? It says, yeah. oh my word, Saudi Arabia score again and it's 2-1. I'm making this an official statement from the Eche Garay account. I was wrong. The Highline and Press is truly, truly working. I apologize, people. Lol. I've never seen this before. Wow. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm, I'm so glad that you read that for me. Well done. And yes, to the podcast listeners, thank you so much. But, you know, not many men in our industries, okay, Mary, apologize. So I'm apologizing, okay? <laughs> I'm admitting I was wrong. Was okay. <laughs> yeah, well, let's talk, obviously, because there was a winner in this game, and we'll get to what's wrong with Argentina and more on that in a minute. We're going to have Mark Oyton in with us. But when we say there was a winner, obviously I'm talking about Saudi Arabia, but when I say there was a winner, let's talk about that goal from El Dasari. What a goal it was, because there's one thing about being able to take a game to somebody, but then to score worldy goals like this on the biggest stage in front of your fans as well, because the stadium was rocking. There were so many Saudi Arabia fans there. What a moment. What a moment. Goal of the tournament so far, I think. Just unbelievable, just because of the pressure and, to your point, what he had to do as he's just going at it against a very strong Argentina defensive side. I, I'm an Aston Villa fan, so I hate seeing Emiliano Martinez concede any kind of goal, but this was a majestic goal and a tremendous, tremendous message from Saudi Arabia saying, we don't care who you are, Argentina. We don't care that you're Copa America champions. We don't care that you're undefeated in 36 matches. We're going to go at you and go for it. And the gamble, the gamble, K. Murray paid off. Unbelievable stuff. Yeah, we're going to get a little later in the show, Dale Johnson in. He's our expert when it comes to VAR decisions, and there's plenty to talk about there. But first, we want to talk to Mark Ogden, who's had his eye on this one, players that stood out for him. But your initial reaction to this result, Mark? I'm really shocked because I, I was watching the first half and it, it could have been what four 0 at half time. So Argentina with the you know the goals that disallowed the dominance. And look, it was a soft penalty. I we have to admit, but Argentina was so dominant in the first half, and you, you kind of felt this could go the way that you know that Louis kind of predicted yesterday in terms of um, you know six or, or five one. But Saudi were fantastic second half, and 
you know, I, I remember being a, a youngster watching Cameroon beat Argentina in the opening game of the World Cup in 1990. And that was, that was one of the shocks, the biggest shocks ever. This is up there with it because, you know, Argentina aren't the defending world champions as they were back in 1990. But highest ranked team, or third ranked team in the world, three years unbeaten. And they've been beaten by a team that are, are ranked lower than Iran, who lost so heavily to England on, on Monday. So a, a massive, massive result. And I think it's really good for the World Cup because one thing that this World Cup has lacked so far is that kind of, that sense that, that the host nation is really kind of up for it. Well, obviously Saudi aren't the host nation, but the reaction in the streets as the final whistle went, and when the goals went in, was loud. There was cheers. There was horn peeping. And let's you know, Saudi's on the border, so it means that you know the Middle East has got a team that can really get behind us. It's great for the World Cup itself. Mark, let me ask you a question here, uh, based on on this game. Obviously, you mentioned uh, that that game in 1990. I, I remember it as well. Would you say because you know all everything that we've talked about Argentina? I mean, I don't have them winning the whole group. I didn't predict that, but I obviously, like many, had them going very far. Obviously, it's just still the first game, so you know I feel sorry for Poland and Mexico because Argentina probably going to get very angry after this. But would you say that this is the biggest upset in World Cup history? Oof. No, I, I think I think Cameroon beating Argentina was big. I think USA beating England back in the nineteen fifty was big, and I think you know. Brazil won Germany seven was a pretty big shock as well. So I yeah, think there are true. you know there, there, yeah. there are bigger there are bigger shocks than this, but I think you know nobody saw this coming, nobody. So there might be some uh, clever people out there that said you know all Argentina are great. I saw it coming. No, they didn't. This this is a massive shock, and it is what the World Cup is about. It's about people being jolted a little bit, thinking, wow, you know, it is a world game now. It's not just about the super heavyweight nation. This is Saudi Arabia. Beating Argentina. Thank you very much for watching ESPN FC on YouTube. For more highlights, analysis, and exclusive content, be sure to subscribe.